And a good morning to you all. I am Michael Barone. We are live at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in St. Paul. Yes, indeed, it's time once again for another Before Box Birthday Bash, which means we're celebrating the music of... Johann Sebastian Bach. Yep, he's my favorite guy, and we're going to have a nice variety of his music today. This is the first of five events throughout the day, the only one to be broadcast. You can find more information at your classical minnesotapublicradio.org or at tcago.org. Our event co-sponsored by Minnesota Public Radio and the Twin Cities chapter of the American Guild of Organists. There are four other events after this one, but this one is rich with music. And we're going to start with a performance by Nils Halker, who is organist at St. Clement's Episcopal Church in St. Paul, recently retired from 25 years teaching at the Science Museum of Minnesota. This is a relatively early piece by Bach, but it's quite remarkable insofar as its prelude with a high C and a low C in the pedal embraces the absolute maximum of what the keyboards on box organ in Arnstadt made possible. The fugue is built on a downward stepwise motion. The, uh, the prelude on a downward stepwise motion, the fugue four voices which enter tenor, alto, bass, soprano. Listen for those. And we step right in with a pedal solo, Nils Halker, Prelude and Fugue in C by Bach.
Prelude and Fugue in C major by Bach. In the Bach catalog is number 545. If you want to look it up, thank you, Nils Halker, for the opening performance of our Before Box Birthday Bash live broadcast. Come on down to 700 South Snelling Avenue and join us. Next, a concerto, not by Bach. It originally was an oboe concerto by Marcello. Uh, Bach's employer had a musically astute son, Johann Ernst of Saxe-Weimar, who went to Amsterdam and collected, uh, came home with a trunk full of Italian concertos, which were all the rage, the new thing, and Bach devoured this music by transcribing it a piece that originally was for a solo instrument and orchestra, he transcribed for the keyboard. Kokisato, prize-winning doctoral student of Alexander Briginsky at the University of Minnesota, plays for us this concerto in D minor after Marcello, transcribed by Bach.
a Bach transcription of what originally was an oboe concerto by Marcello, performance by Koki Sato. It's interesting that Bach probably had access to a handwritten copy of that music even before it was published. He learned a lot about Italian concertos from the travels of his uh, courtly colleague, Johann Ernst. In fact, five of them were transcribed for organ solo, 15 for harpsichord solo, and then later in life, Bach showed just how well he could adapt the Italian three-movement concerto form in pieces that he wrote for the Collegium Musicum concerts at Zimmerman's Coffee House. Can you imagine going out? It's, uh, actually, there's a place like that in St. Paul now that uh, offers classical music in the basement of a brewery. Um, in any event, the double concerto from which we're hearing the middle movement was created for uh, a venue outside of church the slow movement in F major, which is marked largo, implying slowly and expansively, is in my mind without question one of the most exquisitely beautiful pieces that Bach wrote. The interplay of the two soloists as intimate as the conversation of two lovers. So it's probably appropriate that we have a pair who have been married since 1980 to play for us. Brenda and David Mickens, are our violin soloists, our hosts here at Gloria Day Lutheran Church. Mr. Tim Strand is at the console of the Casavant Laterna organ. Here is that middle movement from Bach's double concerto in D minor. <laughs> Thank you. 
such rare beauty and such intertwining of the violin parts, very sensual, not quite X-rated, but certainly parental guidance should be applied. Thank you, Brenda and David Mickens, violinists, and Timothy Strand, organist, for that exquisite middle movement from the Bach double concerto in D minor. If you don't know the piece, look it up. I'm sure you can find it in a YouTube performance somewhere. Speaking of which, we are being streamed today, I am led to believe, which uh, causes me no little fright. I'm never sure what my hair is doing. We move on and back in time. That double concerto was created while Bach was employed in Leipzig at St. Thomas Church and doing some uh, offhand gigs at Zimmerman's Coffee House. The six cello suites we imagine were composed while he was employed by the court of Anhalt Kirten. He was not responsible for any church music during this period between 1717 and 1723, principally involved in creating music for chamber. We think that his solo violin sonatas date from this same time, and these six sonatas for solo cello were shall we say, unusual in the extreme. Nothing like this had been written for the instrument before. This particular C minor suite, uh, Bach, we don't have an autograph for the suites. We've got a very nice copy that Anna Magdalena Bach, his second wife, wrote out. But we do have a manuscript in Bach's hand of his transcription of the piece for lute. Mstislav Rostropovich described the Sarabande, which we're about to hear, as uh, the essence of Bach's genius. And Yo-Yo Ma played it at the first anniversary of the World Trade Center tragedy, as the names of the deceased were read. So deep music, then followed by some gavats. Sarabande and gavats from the cello suite, number five in C minor, Charles Ash who is a member of the Bach Society of Minnesota Orchestra, plays on an instrument that's even older than the music of Bach itself.
Charles Ash, our soloist, playing music by Bach, of course, because it's before Bach's birthday bash that we are celebrating with this live broadcast on your classical Minnesota Public Radio, the Sarabande and the Gavats from the cello suite, number five in C minor. Charles Ash appearing here, courtesy of the Bach Society of Minnesota. He also teaches uh, privately and at Mount Calvary Academy in Excelsior. Bach was good at reusing other people's music, as we heard in the Marcello concerto transcription earlier. He was also uh, pretty good at recycling his own music, and other people have been recycling Bach's music quite effectively uh, ever since. What we have here is originally a soprano aria in a cantata known as the Hunting Cantata. Bach wrote it in 1713 for the birthday of Christian, Duke of Saxe Weissenfeld, who was a neighbor of Bach's employer in Weimar. The text for the aria reads, sheep may safely graze where a good shepherd watches over them, where rulers are ruling well, we may feel peace and rest, and that makes countries happy. A uh, little political uh, padding there. <laughs> As with Yezu Joy of Man's desiring, this movement, known as Sheep May Safely Graze, uh, has had a rich life in arrangements of every sort. Uh, Osip Nakifarov and Inez Guanches play for us music by Bach, arranged for piano, four hands. And again, this is a, 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 the kind of thing that was very uh, sociable in the 19th century, surely, and should be often done today, too, I think, to uh, keep uh, domestic and uh, general happiness going. There's nothing like sitting next to a friendly pianist, in this case, husband and wife. Uh, Leonard Duck made this arrangement, Sheep May Safely Graze, by Bach.
An arrangement of the movement Sheep May Safely Graze from Box Cantata number 208, Kosip Nikiforov and Inez Guanches are performing artists. Osip studied with Yefim Bronfman at the Manhattan School. He's a native Russian. Inez from Venezuela studied piano first in Costa Rica and then came to Minnesota 15 years ago to study with Alexander Briginsky. She got uh, bachelor's and master's degrees with him at the University of Minnesota, but also earned a BA and MA degrees in mass communication from the Hubbard School of Journalism, which uh, might explain why Inez has for some years now been a co-worker of mine at your classical Minnesota Public Radio. Well, the complaint is that the fugues are always such serious business. I think we've proven that Bach writes beautiful melodies also, but he writes some of the most incredible fugues, and I think one of the most extraordinary is that with which we're going to conclude this uh, live before Bach's birthday broadcast. It's the fugue in E minor in the catalog. It's number 548. It's given the nickname The Wedge because, as you will hear, the opening theme basically goes chromatically in outward directions, so it expands, and indeed the music does. This is unusual structurally also because it's a, a da capo fugue, which means that you get the first section as the fugal subject is evolved. Then there's an incredible 231 measure long um, interlude, if you will. When Bach goes crazy, I don't know what he was smoking, but uh, <laughs> certainly Mr. Backman's fingers will be smoking as he uh, runs the roulades up and down the keyboard. And then just as that is about to exhaust itself, Bach transitions to the very beginning of the opening of the piece, and we have the whole first part of the fugue again at the end. Listen closely as Samuel Bachman plays the fugue in E minor known as The Wedge by Bach.
holy moly Anna Magdalena. Boy, just bursts your brain. <laughs> wow, what a piece. The fugue in E minor, the wedge from the prelude and fugue by Bach. Number 548, again, look it up if you want to see what I was talking about, what's going on in the middle and how the end is the same as the beginning. It's just extraordinary. Samuel Backman, our soloist, is an organist, conductor, published composer and arranger, a very busy guy, music director at Holy Cross Catholic Church in North Minneapolis, where he's in charge of three choirs has premiered recently a symphony for organ based on Polish carols and has a new song cycle for soprano and organ soon to be premiered. We look forward to that. Well, that's not Bach. What we've had, though, is Bach, and we have more Bach to share throughout the day. This before Bach's birthday bash is a multifaceted experience, and you can join us next at 10.30 at the Church of Nat Nativity of Our Lord, 1900 Stanford Avenue is the address for that. Not a broadcast, you have to come on down. Thanks to so many people, as I catch my breath here, Josh Savago is our broadcast audio engineer, Megan Lundberg, audio assistant, Evan Clark <laughs> watching the video stream. Thanks, too, to Randy Salas for online support and John Kuntz for making those special promotional YouTube videos that you might have seen. There will be activities this afternoon as well, all uh, nicely lumped together in a neighborhood. St. John the Evangelist Church on Kent Street at 1 o'clock, 2.30, Unity Unitarian on Holly, and at 4 o'clock, House of Hope Presbyterian Church in St. Paul. Thanks to Tessa Block and uh, Tina Major, Thor Carlson, and Tig Ferris Wayne. And thanks to you for joining us for this live Before Box Birthday Bash broadcast on your classical Minnesota Public Radio. I'm Michael Barone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>